Is there a problem in ice arenas? Numerous incident reports have been filed over the last several years related to monitoring and exposure of carbon monoxide and nitrogen dioxide. Where does carbon monoxide and nitrogen dioxide come from? CO and NO2 come from combustion engines in machines like these. Without a catalytic converter, use of combustion engines generates significant amounts of CO and NO2. What are the effects of being exposed to carbon monoxide and nitrogen dioxide day by day? Exposure to relatively low levels of CO is related to increases in low birth weight, congenital defect, infant mortality, cardiovascular disease, congestive heart failure, stroke, asthma, tuberculosis, and pneumonia. And the World Health Organization says that long-term exposure to lower levels of NO2 have far wider-ranging implications on human health than does acute CO exposure. So who's at risk? Everyone, especially pregnant women, the elderly, people with pre-existing medical conditions, and kids. The effects of exposure increase in combination with vigorous exercise like hockey. Because breathing rate increases, absorption rate of poisonous gas increases too. The World Health Organization has guidelines for safe levels of CO. Exposure in combination with light exercise for one hour should not exceed 28 parts per million. Exposure in combination with light to moderate exercise for eight hours of exposure should not exceed eight parts per million. The Minnesota Department of Health currently requires Minnesota ice rinks to limit CO exposure to 30 parts per million. This is clearly a long way from the World Health Organization standards. Kids are exercising more vigorously than these standards describe. And most kids are exposed for longer periods of time than one hour. Because NO2 is even more damaging than CO, the World Health Organization has set a limit of only 0.1 parts per million of NO2 for one hour of exposure. Prolonged exposure to NO2 over days and weeks and months is devastating. Exposures higher than 0.1 parts per million can cause respiratory illness, exercise-induced wheezing, asthma, chronic bronchitis, and rhinitis. The Minnesota Department of Health requires ice arenas to test levels of CO and NO2 once a week. These tests only take a few minutes and do not accurately represent what happens in a 24-hour period. One arena in Minnesota purchased a continuous air monitoring system. Here's a graph of the NO2 levels for a three-day period. The data collected shows that NO2 levels are rising at night. This is an indication that actual levels of NO2 would probably be higher during the day. It's just that during the day, people are around to breathe the air. People are essentially acting as human HEPA filters. We have an ethical and moral responsibility to protect the well-being of our kids. We need to do everything in our power to restrict children's exposure to these dangerous gases. Setting limits in accordance with the World Health Organization's recommendations is a must. Frequent testing, adequate ventilation, and good operational procedures can get us there. Ideally, though, we should eliminate indoor use of combustion engines altogether. Some ice rinks in Minnesota have done just that and are now using all-electric equipment to resurface and edge the ice. Another solution is to install a continuous air monitoring device to ensure minute-by-minute minute air quality for skaters. This would also eliminate human error. The average cost of one of these devices is around $5,000, a small price to pay when compared with public safety. So what will you do to ensure the safety of Minnesotans in ice arenas? What will you do to reduce the casualties associated with CO and NO2.